Welcome back, everyone, to another episode of College Hockey Talk. On today's podcast, I am joined by a very special guest, sophomore from the Michigan Tech hockey team, Jake Crespi. Welcome to the podcast, Jake, and thank you so much for coming on. Yeah, thanks for having me. So are you a sophomore, or do you consider yourself a, you're, yourself a junior since the season's ended? Um, yeah, it's more just COVID sophomore. You know, there's that extra fifth-year option, so uh, COVID sophomore. Nice, nice. I like that term. Well, obviously, you had to deal with a lot of challenges this year because of the pandemic. How did you personally deal with all the challenges that yourself and your team faced this year? Yeah, I would say just just being prepared at all times. We had a couple stints during the season where, you know, we'd be preparing for a game and something would come up or, or the other team would have a positive or we would have a positive. So you get a little break in there. But um, I think it, it ended up working out itself out well. We had you know, great leadership across the league from all the teams and all the coaches. So they handled it well, and we were all the players were ready to go, and it worked out well. Yeah, and you played with if in front of no fans this year as well. Uh, how did you adjust to that? Because I've never been to Michigan Tech before, but everyone that's been there says that you guys have one of the best fans in the nation. Yeah, I mean, it's a it's a pretty big barn. I think we we seat about forty six hundred, um, and it's you know it's usually packed every night there. So. It's, um, you know, it's not the biggest, the biggest rink in college hockey, but I would say it's one of the loudest that I've, you know, ever seen gotten to be a part of. So it was an adjustment for sure. Um, just, you know, just missing out on that, but it didn't change the way anybody played. It just was one of those things where we missed them a lot. Yeah. And obviously you had to deal with some schedule changes as well throughout the season, as you were just alluding to earlier, how'd you mentally stay prepared for all those changes and postponements that happened to your schedule and, uh, what was the key for maintaining flexibility for this year? I mean, I think, you know, just staying close with the guys and making sure even during those breaks when, because we had a couple of instances where, where we had COVID and you had to stay away from your teammates. So just making sure you stay in contact and, and our coach did a good job of setting up Zoom meetings. So we were still thinking hockey during the breaks. And um, it was just one of those things we had to work through as a group and every team went through it this year. So we knew we weren't alone in it and, it, you know, it played out, but it was good. Yeah, and how, were you ever scared of getting COVID yourself? And, like, how did you deal with that fear? Because that's something that I thought of watching your team as a fan, but obviously I wasn't a part of it. So I'm assuming as a player you something that you might have thought of as well. Yeah, I mean, so I, I actually did get it early on in the season. That was the first time our team had to shut, shut down. Luckily, we weren't playing games yet. Um, but that's one of those things, you know, you feel responsible and you got to hold yourself accountable to the rest of the group and you don't want to put yourself or your teammates in danger and, and especially the community. So um, you definitely don't want to be that guy that, that gets it, but it's, it's one of those things you can't, you can't be scared of. You have to just, you know, make sure you're taking the right precautions and following protocol and just sticking to business. Now, how are you feeling now? Do you still have any long-term symptoms? Nope, no symptoms. It's uh, it cleared up pretty quick and I never really had symptoms uh, to start with, I thought it was just a cold, but with everything going on, we, we were testing pretty, pretty regularly. And it was just me and one other guy that ended up getting it right away. So um, no symptoms really there felt, felt a lot better right away. Well, that's good to hear. And that's definitely strange because I know some people that have gone COVID have like really bad symptoms. And then there's other people who don't really have any symptoms and it really doesn't matter like who you are. I always found right. that interesting about the disease. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's definitely person to person. And, um, luckily we're, we're blessed to be, you know, we're athletes and we're, we're healthy enough. So it, the accountability doesn't just lie within the team. It's obviously making sure you're doing the right thing for the community as well, because there are people that are, you know, more susceptible to worse symptoms than we can have. So it was, it's about just holding yourself accountable. Yeah. And back to some hockey questions now. Uh, so three and three overtime was introduced to college hockey this year. Um, what was that like for yourself, getting more space on the ice and having more opportunities to score goals? It's, I mean, it's a lot more fun. Obviously, like you said, it's, it's a lot more ice. So you get to use your creativity and um, use your teammates. And, you know, it feels – there's a lot more on the line, but it feels like pickup hockey and you get to, you know, use your feet, use your skill, and, um, you know, try and, try and get the winner. So. I love the three and three just because it eliminates ties. And I hate ties. I'm not a tie guy. Are you the yeah. same way? Yeah, no, definitely the same way. It's better to get the game on, get the game done, and especially this year with how important every single point was in the conference and um, trying to get to the tournament. So it was it was really important. I, I definitely liked it. 
Yeah, and I heard you have to stay a little more defensively minded in those situations just because if you make one little off or little defensive mistake, you can cause an offensive rush for the other team. Is that something you oh, definitely. when you were part of it? Definitely. I mean, we had one uh, – we had a three-on-three OT at the end of the season against Northern right before going into playoffs. And um, I ended up with a, a three-on-one coming my way. So it was one of those – and I'm a forward. So I have to say, you know, was, you, you got to make sure you pick up because – when there's a rush, your teammates are going two on one. It's most likely coming back the same way. So you got to be ready to pick everything up. Well, luckily you have one of the best goalies in the WCHA. So did that make up for it? Yeah, it did make up for it. He was huge for us this year. And, you know, it was awesome. He's, he's my classmate. So it was awesome seeing him take a step. And obviously freshman year, his twin brother had a great season. And we knew, we knew what Blake was capable of. So his time came around. And, yeah, those, those two are pretty special. Now, what was the freshman class like uh, this year with your team? And talk about the uh, contribution they made to your team as well. And how did you help their transition into college hockey, especially since this year was a little bit different than other years you were a part of? Yeah, obviously it's, you know, they have less games and less time to prepare and get into it since um, everything, we we weren't sure if we were going to play it all right away. You know, they had no idea. So it was about just if like first and foremost incorporating them into the team and making sure everything you know, make sure they're comfortable, everything's good there. So um, it was – sorry about that. Good? Yeah, I'm good. I don't know what okay. happened. Someone's going out with my – yeah, someone's going out with my phone, my bad. Um, just incorporating them to the team first, and then they, they handled the on-ice stuff really well. I mean, they're hockey players, and they knew what they came in here to do, and they did a great job. Obviously, uh, Arvid Kateroth was – uh, rookie of the WCHA this year, he came in and adjusted well to smaller ice and playing tighter systems. So he adjusted well. And I mean, all the other guys followed suit too. Obviously Carson Bantle was, was a, you know, maybe not point production he wanted, but big role guy for us and brought a lot of energy. Now for yourself, what was the biggest improvement you made to your game this year? Um, I think being able to chip in a little bit more offensively and just finding new dimensions to my game I think last year came it came to me a little bit slower just adjusting to um, new systems bigger guys faster pace so it was just about getting my mind right first and then being able to you know use my abilities to chip in any way I could. Now thinking about this past year you lost to Bemidji in the WCHA finals Uh, what did you take away from that series and what do you think needs to be done to get over the hump and win your first WCHA title or CCHA now? Yeah, CCHA now. Um, I think, you know, just we played so well against them all year and we were only able to get one win against them. But, I mean, there was it was a lot of tight competition this year in the WCHA. And I think just as a group, you know, learning how to win, learn how to you – know, I mean, we were a younger team again this year. So just learn how to win those big games and, and you know, build off the lead because we were up 2-0 at one point. We just gave everything away. So I think it's just dialing in and – learning to win the games we need to win. Did it hurt seeing them go into the national tournament? Because it seems like a lot of those schools in the WCHA that had those big runs in the in-season tournament made the tournament this year nationally. Yeah, uh, I wouldn't say it necessarily hurt. It was one of those things just feeling like we we knew we could have been there too. Um, but they were a great team. It's not taking anything away from them. And, you know, they had they were so disciplined and they had an old mature group that they really handled themselves well. So, I think um, our time's coming up soon, and we just got to prepare and make sure we learn the lessons and, and take everything away from last year that we did. Yeah, I know the WCHA had a great national tournament. Obviously, Bemidji upset uh, Wisconsin, and Minnesota State made it all the way to the Frozen Four. Uh, do you think the style of play that the WCHA has is more beneficial to your style of play? I would say so. It's um, it's a it's it's always a more – it's an older and, you know, it's a really gritty – gritty challenging league so it's about learning what to do with just the littlest amount of space possible and I think the USHL did a good job of preparing me for that um but still comes with maturity and just experience playing in the league but yeah the WCHA was it was really tight checking this year great everyone came to play really well so how do you adapt to that physicality because watching some of your games this year you guys could lay the body pretty well and there were some pretty big hits that I've noticed and I think it was a Minnesota State I'm not sure who they played, but there was kind of like an almost a line brawl that started. That's how like physical it was. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's, it's definitely physical and it's, um, that's what makes it fun. That's what makes hockey super fun. You love playing in those games and you obviously it doesn't leave the ice. So it's, uh, 
it's fun playing physical out there and, and getting to play other physical teams. It gets you into the game early and really wakes you up. So now, like I kind of alluded to also in the interview is the WCHA is officially over this past year was mm-hmm. the last year of it. It's now going to be called the CCHA. What's your thoughts on the new conference and how excited are you to get started playing the same teams, I guess, in a much smaller conference, I guess. Right. Well, uh, personally, I think it's, it's cool because it's back to back years of, of kind of a benchmark like this season was our 100th season uh Michigan Tech and that was that was awesome to be a part of it felt really cool to be a part of a team like that and then now having the inaugural season well not inaugural but running it back with the CCHA it's cool being part of the first year of the new conference again and um it's just a cool thing gives you some pride and something to look forward to and take into your games now the travel schedule is going to be a bit easier, but are you going to miss playing in Alabama and Alaska? Cause those places seem like super fun to visit. I actually had, so my freshman year, I never had the opportunity to travel to Alaska. Um, but Alabama is always awesome because I mean, even just yesterday we got two inches of snow, so we'll go down there in, in January or February and it's sixties, you know, fifties. So everyone's getting their shorts out and it's definitely a nice. It's a nice change of pace getting down there. Now your coach, Coach Schwan, just got a contract extension today. Uh, what's it like playing under him? And just talk about what you learned under him so far this year. Yeah, definitely. I mean, he's – especially this year, I worked a lot with him about just growing my game mentally, being able to read the play better and, and just, you know, having a higher hockey IQ. Um, with him, it's it's a little bit old school, and he, and he holds everyone accountable, and it's exactly what I want to be a part of. So it's great. It gets everybody going, and we're excited to have him back. Definitely. And obviously, you know, how did you prepare for this pa- uh, this past year? Because everyone was in quarantine, a lot of gyms were closed, and a lot of ice time was hard to find as well. So how did you prepare for this year? Um, so I stayed up here. Uh, I moved into a house up here uh, just a little bit off campus, and we were able to get some uh, outside workouts going with the guys. So we would we'd find anywhere we could, and we'd get some uh, – we asked our trainer to get us some dumbbells from the – um, from the rink and stuff. So we were able to get some workouts in together um, during this off season. Then it took a little while to get on the ice, but um, it was mostly just off ice preparation, you know, weights, conditioning, everything we could do until everything was normal, normal for training. But yeah, how'd you adjust to all those challenges that were brought uh, because of the pandemic? Because I know a lot of guys were doing kind of body weight workouts and working with bands more than just like weights in general. Right. I, you got to get creative for sure. I saw um, a bunch of a bunch of videos on Twitter or online of guys like putting cinder blocks on a little metal bar and squatting with that. And so you got to get creative with it. And, um, it's one of those things you you've got to be disciplined and make sure you're taking care of yourself off the ice, even even when you're, you're uncertain of what's going to happen. So um, just getting creative and working with the guys and make sure we're pushing each other. Now, you're from uh, Brighton, Michigan. How did you start mm-hmm. playing hockey and falling in love with the sport? Um, yeah, my journey's a little bit different. I, so I had grown up in Europe. Um, my dad got a job up there when I was super young. So I lived there for five years, and I didn't start playing hockey until I was about nine. I think I was nine. That was the, not the first time I skated. I think I skated once in Europe, but I grew up playing soccer. Um, so my first season of hockey was third, fourth grade. Um, and I don't know what got me into it at all. No idea. I think it was, it's just the, it's a hockey rich area in Brighton. And I was close friends with Logan Cockrell, who is captain of Boston university and Luke Morgan at university of Michigan. He was my neighbor. Um, and just being around them when I, those were the first guys I met when I moved back to Michigan. And I think just being around them and, them playing and we were just playing outside I think that started it all for me and just ran with it yeah what's it like growing up in Europe that's pretty cool it wasn't bad it's uh I was pretty young we moved out there I was I was two and a half when we first got out there and I got back to the U.S. when I was seven so um it was it was cool from what I remember it's obviously very different and hockey's an afterthought there everything's soccer so um it was it was cool it's a good experience yeah, what part of Europe were you out? Germany, England, I'm trying to think. Yeah, no, we lived in – I lived in France for uh, four years, just outside of Paris, and then moved to Germany for a year. Oh, nice. 
what, what's yeah. France like? Because I've always wanted to visit there before. It seems like a really cool spot. However, the people seem kind of intense there, especially in Germany. Yeah. Yeah, they're not, they're, uh, from what my dad always told me, they're, they're not a huge fan of Americans. They think we're snobs and, um, <laughs> They might be right, but it's uh, you really got to put in an effort to adapt to their culture and make sure you're doing your best to learn their language while you're living there because they will give you faces if your your French isn't good enough. So my dad and my mom spent a good portion of time just listening to uh, audio tapes in the car. I remember that just so that they could learn better French in order to fit in a little better. Can you speak any French or not really? I used to. That that was big. Like like we have English class here in the U.S. They it's all French there, so um, I learned quite a bit. But after not practicing, I don't remember much. Oh, that stinks. That would be cool if you could just chirp somebody in French and then they won't understand you. That'd be hilarious. <laughs> yeah, I wish. I'm not a chirper, anyways, though. So now, I guess for. like growing up in Europe, obviously the soccer scenes there is huge. Uh, did you ever have a chance to go into any games uh, when you were a kid? Because yeah, me and uh, the- my dad. My dad actually had the opportunity to take me and my older brother to a World Cup game. I think it was 2005. It was either the 2005 World Cup or 2004 World Cup. And me and my brother got to go to a Spain versus Ukraine game. And I remember that. And I remember having to wear earplugs because I was still pretty young. And it was just so loud in there in such an electric environment. But, yeah, Spain versus Ukraine, I think. I'm pretty sure Spain won like 5-0. So, yeah. I've always wanted to go to a World Cup, and it's coming to the U.S. in 2026. So I hopefully get a chance in five years or whenever that is supposed to happen. Right. That'll be fun. That would be cool. Yeah. Do you still watch soccer today or not really? Not really, but uh, we've got – we obviously Arvid is the first Swede we've had here at Michigan Tech in a while, and I've, I've played with Europeans before in, in juniors. So um, they were always my insight back into soccer. So once I transitioned away, I never got back in, but they keep me in the loop and I try and ask questions just, just to see how it's going. What's their thoughts on this new super league that's supposed to happen that everyone's talking about? <laughs> I haven't gotten to talk to them about it yet, but I just saw something on Twitter before I got on here about uh, a bunch of fans are, are uh, rioting or something about the new league. So I'm sure they're feeling just as down about it. Definitely. I, I don't know much about soccer, but it doesn't look like good news. So I'll, I'll stick with yeah. their word on it because they actually watched the game. Yeah, exactly. Now, before Michigan Tech, uh, you played for your high school in Brighton. Uh, what was your high school hockey experience like there? Uh, it was awesome. It's, um, you know, Michigan high school isn't, isn't known to pump a lot of people out, but it's, it's been growing every single year. And um, I was fortunate enough to play at uh, what I would consider the top public school in Michigan. Um, and we, we, we played good competition every year, but Brighton's one of those, it was one of those schools that it was just, it produces, I mean, there's a lot of talent being produced there and even kids that, from Brighton that didn't end up playing for the high school, like, uh, like Colin Adams and Keegan Hottishell. But then you see guys like Colin Bielek, who has an insane year this year and second team all American. So he was, he played at our high school. Um, it was just an awesome experience being a part of, you know, something like that where, there is a little bit of culture in it. And um, I was fortunate to have a coach in Kurt Cavisto who won a national championship with Michigan state. Um, and just, you know, he was a good mentor to me, just figuring out how to play the game the right way, because I initially went to high school to take a step back um, from hockey a little bit, but just absolutely fell in love with it again. And um, it was a really awesome experience. We got, we had some really special teams there and um, I made some, some really good buddies from that. Yeah, no, and I guess, like, playing in public high school, do you think you faced any adversity getting noticed by junior teams? 100%. That was always – that was a big concern um, my senior year when I was really starting to to apply into it again and, and fully invest myself in this idea of uh, a future in hockey. So it was a, it was a stressful a stressful time, but, um, you know, everything obviously – it works itself out. And like I said, having Kurt as a mentor, he was he – was a he was a kid who played house hockey up until high school and then ends up playing in the null three in the null, the old null, and then um, getting a scholarship to Michigan state. So a guy like that in your corner that can keep you at bay and make sure you don't get too ahead of yourself is, was really valuable. And what was your favorite memory you've ever had at Brighton high school? Hockey winning our, yeah, we won a, we got to win a state championship my senior year, 2017. That was awesome. And we had such a special team. There was like, we had uh Logan Neaton in that so he's at UMass Lola he just got he was drafted to Winnipeg uh, Adam Conquest 
at Bowling Green, Sam Brennan at Air Force, Tim Urkula at Northern. Like we just, we had some really, really good players. And, um, and even the players that didn't move on, like they were so beneficial to that team and um, just making it such an awesome experience. Yeah. And I guess you also won Mr. Hockey in Michigan your senior year as well. Mm -hmm. What was it like to win that award? It was an honor. I mean, it's really cool. And, and there's some, there's been some great winners in the past, obviously Abdul Cater, um, Andy Green, who's had such a great career with New Jersey. Um, and there's, there's countless other great players that won it. So it was super cool for me to, to have that for a personal award. And um, there's the cheering on top for that season. Do you, do they give you like a trophy and where do you keep it? Yeah. I, uh, I gave that one to my parents. They deserve that the most. So I gave that to them and still at their house. Nice. That's awesome. And then you went on to play in the USHL. How'd you get the opportunity to play in that league? Um, I'm not really sure how that panned out. I, um, I was, it was the beginning of my senior year. Um, and Billy McCall invited me out to skate with them. They were in Ann Arbor playing the U S team and they were practicing at Yo. So they invited me out to come practice with them. And, um, he must've liked me enough. And he told me at the end of practice, they're going to look at drafting me. And after that, after that, uh, I started getting a little bit more attention from USHL teams. And I was originally looking at playing the BCHL for uh, either the Vernon Vipers or Chilliwack. Um, but I, I was fortunate enough to be drafted uh, in the second round to Tri-City. So I uh, made that decision to move out there. And what was the transition like going from high school to the USHL? It was, it was a lot to handle at first. Um, you know, just – it's completely different styles of play in high school. Like I said, in Michigan, isn't, isn't the, the high end tier hockey in Michigan, like triple a dominates the sport of hockey in Michigan. So um, I would say it was, it was definitely a big adjustment having to adjust to skill levels ahead of me at my level. So it was, um, it took a big learning curve. And um, that first year was, was great because the coaching staff in tri city was so great to me and, gave me so many opportunities to grow. So um, I would say, I would say it was a tough adjustment, but it was, it was a great time. What was your favorite memory with Tri? I would say just, just being with the group. I mean, we had, we had two really talented teams. My first year, um, we, we kind of pulled, came a little bit short on what we were expected and we started off so strong and kind of fizzled, but that second year we were super talented. Um, Sadly, I was, I had a, a nagging shoulder injury from, from high school. So I had to leave after 18 games to get a shoulder surgery. Um, but just the group of guys that we had that second year was, they were, we were so close and they were so close to me and important to me. So um, it sucked leaving them, but I would say the, the best memory from that was just every single guy I got to meet. Yeah, you got to put Zach Jones, who's obviously a national champion and just mm -hmm. signed with the New York Rangers. What was it like playing with him? He was, yeah, from like day one was like, wow, this kid is, this kid's something else. So um, super cool getting to see him and obviously and played with Ronnie too. And those two, those two as a D pairing, when you got to be out there that, with them, it was a treat. You just had to get open. Puck's going to find you. So um, it was a treat playing with guys like that. Now, uh, how did the USHL help prepare you for college hockey with Michigan Tech? Yep. Um, obviously, I, I got to – I aged out, um, so I was there as an older guy, and I think it was just good being able to to be, to be in a position where you kind of have the reins and you get to – you're an older guy in the league, so you feel confident and, and you get to really take on a leadership role. So I would say that was the biggest thing of – it was mostly that mental adjustment the second year that got me really prepared for, for college and being able to take that leap. And what was your recruiting process like, and why did you choose to go to Michigan Tech? So I was originally committed to uh, Lake State when I was in high school, and then when I got to juniors, I decided to open it up um, and give myself an opportunity just to look around because I didn't really have that opportunity. Um, and there's probably a week after that, I was getting calls uh, from Joe, from Joe Sean, and um, he recruited me really hard and brought me up on a visit, and I visited uh, – Tech and Northern, so I had to make a decision in that rivalry, and um, I just fell in love with the facilities and, and just met a few of the guys here that seemed like really great guys and seemed like, you know, they loved it here and what, what 
they had, they envisioned for the future was something I wanted to be a part of. Now, what was the biggest adjustment you had to make to college hockey? Was it the speed of the game or was it just going against guys that were four years older than you were? No, I would say it was the speed and also just um, learning to play a different style because, I mean, USHL did prepare me, but it was a completely different style of hockey than in the USHL. Um, so I think just getting my mind wrapped around the pace and being able to slow things down for myself, that was the biggest adjustment. Now, earlier on in this interview, we're talking about how you miss the fans at Michigan Tech. So just talk about the mm-hmm. atmosphere at Michigan Tech hockey games and what's it like being a player in that atmosphere? Oh, it's crazy. Um, you know, they, they, you come out and it's, there's no music. There's never really any music playing except for intermissions. It's pet band 24 seven. Um, you've got a whole section to the, if you're sitting on the bench looking at the ice to the left of us, a whole section of pet band. And then that entire bleacher section behind us is made up of, of our, uh, our really pep rally team or whatever they're called Mitch's misfits and they're sensational. Those guys are awesome. So, um, it's crazy having them and it's just one of the loudest buildings I've ever, I've ever been in. Now, I guess like there was this thing I was talking to Colin Sawyer about when we had him on the podcast was about like holiday week, like there's ice spectacles and it's like a really cool. Uh, yeah. What's that like? Cause I don't really know too much about it. Yeah. Winter carnival is uh it's a super special, super special weekend here at tech. It's um all the fraternities and sororities, they, they build ice sculptures and even some uh, businesses will, will tag along too. And it's a whole strip down college Ave of, of just massive, very detailed, awesome ice sculptures. Um, and there's, you know, they have a, like it's a mini party on campus. They make these giant ice sculptures and they put huge speakers in them and they've got music pumping through campus. And um, we got something up here called broom ball. So they make, they're the, many many ice rinks um and people just skid around in boots and on shin pads and they've got brooms in their hand they're playing hockey so that always attracts a crowd and um it's just one of those cool things it's 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 it wraps up the culture of michigan tech you know we're we're buried in snow all year so of course you leave it to us to find a way to have some fun in it and uh it's really special those games are those games mean a lot too and um, there's a huge trophy that comes out after so we were fortunate we were fortunate to win that this year. So, And do you ever, have you ever tried the broom ball at all? Like take out the broom and just try some moves on some unsuspecting strangers? No, no, but I've heard in the past hockey players have tried and I think uh, hockey players aren't allowed in that anymore. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty oh. sure. It's mostly for the, uh, for the other students and, and the rest of the student body to really enjoy and, and have a piece of it. So That's disappointing, but that'll be fun to just to have the hockey team come out. But you should, like, separate you guys. So, like, you're on one team, another guy's on another team. I think that would be right. fun. Right. That would be fun. That would be fun. Sadly, it's uh, usually all that's going on a couple or the night before our games will happen. So we only get to go out and we walk around for a little while and just and soak it in and be a part of the culture a little bit and then go back home, get prepared for the game. Is the game kind of like a homecoming game in a way? Yeah, it's it would it could be summed up as homecoming games. And, and it's – uh. So it's a it's two game series, obviously, and, and they take the, the total goals from each team. So whoever has the most goals at the end of the weekend uh, gets to take the trophy. So um, it was the first time our group of seniors or incoming seniors that are about to be about to be leaving us. That's the first time they got to win. It's our first win, too. So super special this year getting the, the chance to win that. Yeah, and also in your freshman year, you won your first WCHA playoff experience against Northern mm-hmm. Michigan in a three-overtime thrower as well. Uh, what was your first <laughs> yeah. playoff experience like, and how did you handle being in a three-overtime game? Because you're so physically exhausted, but mentally you're still right there trying to win that game. Yeah, it's um, we definitely weren't expecting that, and I don't think anyone could have expected that, but that was that was one of those experiences that that really just makes college hockey so awesome and and you're stuck in that and and it's just there's not a lot of talking there's not a lot of anything going on on the bench it's just everyone's making sure they don't make the mistake and everyone's picking each other up holding each other accountable and um preparing for the next ot you just kick your legs up and and get ready you know what you know what the job's got to be uh the rest of the way through you already did it for at that point six periods so um you just got to be ready to get out and Make sure you're doing your job. How did you get out of bed the next day? How so? <laughs> yeah, it was. Uh, we were moving. All, we were all moving a little bit slow, but um, you know, you just enjoy that day off, and you do what you can to get your body prepared for 
practice the day after that and get ready for the next series. And watching that five overtime game between Duluth and North Dakota, did it bring back any memories of that game? Yeah, and, and, and my legs were hurting just watching, but um, that was that was a crazy one. Um, we were we definitely weren't jealous of that. We were jealous of the position they're in, but we were not jealous of five overtimes. Definitely, definitely. Now you were supposed to play Minnesota State uh, before the season got shut down your freshman year. Where <laughs> were you when you found out that news, and what was your reaction to that? We were uh, we were on the bus. We were so we had left the day before that all, everything got shut down. We we made a five hour drive to Minnesota Duluth, and we were staying the night in Duluth, and then. Uh, we were seeing tweets and everything in bed that night of NBA canceling and the NHL canceling. We were like, all right, like we just got to get through, like, like we got to get through this weekend, like see what happens. And then we got back on the bus, left the hotel and they announced it was going to be a one game series, just win one game. And, you know, they're, they're just trying to rush the process, but 30 minutes later, another call came in and they said, actually, we're just going to shut it down. So we were on the bus about an hour outside of Mankato, got to turn around and head seven hours back home. That stinks. How did you handle, how did the seniors handle it, especially since that was their last experience in college hockey? I think they handled it well. Um, obviously, that's such a big shock and, and, and it's a lot, you know, it rushes your process of having to figure out you know, what's next. So um, we were feeling for them, and, but, but they handled it well. And we had a really good senior class last year of guys that, you know, really, they already had some some plans figured out and what to do, and um, they handled it well. So now, being being in your third year in college hockey next year, what type of leadership do you hope to bring to the team? Especially since a lot of young guys are going to be looking up to you more often. Right, I think it's just taking the next step in my in my personal development um, and making sure that I'm doing the right things, so that way I can help the younger guys do the right things. Because it's hard to hold someone accountable if you're not doing the right things. So I think just using this, those, those two years of experience to guide me next year and, um, you know, keep getting sharper, keep learning and, and keep developing so that I can help out in any way I can. Now, what are your off-season plans? I guess, like, are you going to take a little bit of a break uh, from hockey just to relax your mind or anything you have fun planned, I guess? Yeah, no, I, uh, I mostly, I try to stay off the ice and and golf was going to be opening up here pretty soon. But like I said, we got some more snow yesterday. So uh, we got to wait for that again. But really just grind in the weight room and stay off the ice as much as possible and just enjoy time with the guys. That's awesome. Well, let's start off talking about the non-hockey segment of the podcast by asking some non-hockey yeah. questions. So on the website of Michigan Tech, it says you are a big golf fan. So which pro golfer would you want to go golfing with? Mm, that's a good one. I think uh, – Probably, I mean, everyone. I think everyone would love the chance to golf with DJ because everything he's doing right now is uh, it's super special, and getting lessons from him would be great. Um, Rory, you know, all the big guys. Brooks Kepka seems like an awesome guy to go golf with. So. Definitely, DJ would be cool too because he might bring out Wayne Gretzky, so you can get hockey stories and golf stories as well. And maybe he'll bring out Wayne Gretzky's daughter, and that would be fun too. Definitely, definitely. I would say probably Tiger Woods just because he's one of the best golfers of all time, so it'll be cool to get the chance to golf with him. Right. Oh, yeah, that'd be great. And I mean, just sharing that, that knowledge he has, and I feel like he's so detailed in everything he does. So just being able to be around him and, and soaking in some of that, that knowledge, you can even take it back to hockey. So mm -hmm, Definitely. I Hopefully they make like a Michael Jordan-style documentary on his golfing career because that'll be super fun to yeah. watch. Yeah, did you see uh, HBO did put out a, a little two-part documentary on Tiger Woods? It was oh, I really did cool. see that. I have to you should that check out. that out. Yeah, it was really cool. Yeah, no, I definitely – because, like, I remember the Michael Jordan documentary. feels crazy. It's been a year since it was released. It feels like mm -hmm. it was out, like, a couple of months ago. But, no, it was super cool to kind of get an inside look on how he, like, prepared for basketball games. And I think it would be cool to see how Tiger Woods prepares for golf tournaments and stuff like that. Definitely. Yeah, no, that little two-part documentary, it takes it back to when he first picked up a club. and. Um, and every when everything went wrong and when everything was going right, so it's really cool seeing uh, you know some introspection into the life of Tiger Woods. Yeah, I think it's crazy how he was like three years old and everyone knew he was going to be like a golf legend. It was just like and having all that yeah. expectation on yourself when you're that young. I don't know how I could handle it. I don't know how anyone could handle it. He's handled it pretty well for the most part. Yeah, yeah, he did a great job, and obviously, just hopefully he can recover and. Um, you know, get back to golfing soon. We all get to watch, watch the legend. 
best comeback ever if he comes back and wins like a major tournament. That'll be super fun. That would be awesome. Now, what music do you like to listen to and what artist hypes you up before a game? Oh, that's, yeah, that's a good question. I've, because one of my, one of my favorite things away from hockey is um, diving into music and, and just listening to all, all sorts of music. I would say um, my main source of music is, is hip hop and rap. Um, call it Detroit roots or whatever, but um, you know, really enjoy hip hop and hip hop and rap. And I would say, uh, you know, like Lil Baby, Gunna, uh, ASAP Rocky, guys like that get me going before a game. You ever listen to Big Sean? Because I know he's a big Detroit guy. Yep, yep. I used to listen to Big Sean a lot uh, when I was younger, but haven't listened to much of his new music. Yeah, I know he hasn't released that much lately, which is kind of disappointing because some of his older stuff is really good in my opinion. Oh, sensational. I was in, I'd be in like eighth, ninth grade, and I thought it was the best music I'd ever heard in my life. So oh, I was, yeah. uh, I did enjoy that a lot. Now, are you the locker room DJ or who else has that job? Uh, not before games. I, I'll usually DJ before practices or, or just throw stuff on when everyone's in passing or we're going in for testing or anything. Like, I'll usually DJ in the locker room. But for games, we've got uh, our, our equipment manager, Anthony Harris, he usually just takes it and throws in a little uh, like big booty mix or some other kind of mix, just, just something that everyone else can, you know, everyone listens to. So. Nice. Now, speaking of some of your teammates, uh, who's the funniest teammate you have at Tech? Funniest teammate? I, I would have to say either Cooper Watson or Trent Bliss or Justin Miziak, actually. It's pretty close with all three of them, but typically those three will feed off of each other, and then it's just those three will go at it, and it's always really funny dialing into those. Now, you said you weren't the best chirper on the ice, but who is the best chirper on the team, and what's the best thing you've heard from that teammate? <laughs> I can't, I won't be able to think of anything specific from them, but uh, I would have to say Colin Swire is pretty good. Um, but he just starts from the puck drop. So it's like right away and he just wants to get in guys' heads. Um, Trent Bliss is pretty good. And uh, Parker Stretsky, who's my roommate, he's pretty good too. Uh, how many penalties has Colin drawn because of his tripping abilities? He draws a lot. Uh, I think Griffin Lawfren at Northern's had – a couple suspensions because of Colin <laughs> and I think off the ice they're friends but Colin really get is really good at pushing his buttons and, and that's a that's definitely a player you want to get in his head because he's so impactful for that team so um yeah that's one of the many things Colin does well for us yeah no it's be especially some of those guys at Bemidji who can really have the puck and if you put them in the box they can't score and you can definitely control right them. right yeah exactly no he's he's great at it and, and he loves doing it so who has the best style on the team besides yourself, obviously? Yeah, I mean, I was going to say myself. Uh, best style, definitely not Bliss. Um, I would say Arvids is pretty good. Mm -hmm. His style is pretty good. Um, Spoyer loves it. He's a, he's a good Chicago boy, and the Chicago boys love how they look. So he's, uh, he's got some good style. I can't, think, I can't think of everyone else. Usually it's, I mean, because of how snowy and – and, uh, you know, gray it is outside. You don't really dress to impress. You show up to the rink in sweats, so um, you don't see a lot of it. So maybe this summer I'll, I, I would have a better answer for you when I get to see everyone out when it's uh, sunny. Yeah, definitely, definitely. And some of those golf outfits too. Yeah, um, of course. That changes the game. Definitely. Now, what's it like playing with Trenton Bliss? Because he had a great year this year and mm -hmm. last year as well. Yeah, he's uh, – I mean, he's one of those talents that's just – like it's – it'll uh, – he has those moments where it just wows you and it's like things that he does are really really impressive um and I wouldn't I wouldn't give up by any means say he's a fantastic skater but he does what he can with with the speed he has and um it's so hard to get the puck from him in practice and, and guys have a tough time getting it from him in games too so super fun playing with him he's just he's so creative and um you know it he just sucks in the D so much that it makes it everyone else is on the ice's job easy so it's one of those guys you love to play with now, if you could have lunch with anyone in the world, who would it be and why? Lunch with anyone in the world? Um, I would say I, I definitely – I want to meet Austin Matthews really bad. Lunch would be good with him. He seems like just the coolest guy. Um, anyone else? Probably probably some hip-hop artists uh, like, you know, J. Cole, Kendrick Lamar would be sweet. Sweet yeah, meeting no. them. Um, I got a, got a few other artists. I, I would say probably musicians and – Austin awesome, Matthews. That'd be pretty cool. 
Yeah, J. Cole would be cool because he'll like inspire you or give you some like inspiration. Exactly. Help you get through the yeah, day. exactly. He'll give you a good life lesson or two. Mm-hmm. And that's what you need uh, sometimes during lunch is just to think a little bit outside the box. Because normally when you eat lunch, you're not thinking that much. So it's good to have a little different perspective during that time period. Oh, definitely. Definitely. And then Austin Matthews would be cool. In my opinion, I'm, I, I think he has the best style in the league. Like, 100%. I could never rock out some of the stuff he's pulled off. I would look <laughs> terrible in it, but for some reason, he makes it look so cool, and I got to respect that. And that mustache. I don't know how he pulls it off, but it seems mm-hmm. to work for him. So definitely, definitely get some style tips from him. I think it's the confidence, too, because he's so confident on the ice, but he's also confident off the ice, so that definitely yeah. helps. Yeah, it definitely does. What's the best style thing you've seen? I think, like, he was in L.A., and he was wearing, like, shorts that are, like, up to his, like, thighs mostly. It, was, it looked like – Yeah. And then he was wearing, yeah, like, Yeah, I mean, nice... it's just cool because he'll he's, – he's, he's rocking designer clothes and designer hats and glasses and shoes, but it's, like, he makes it look kind of, uh, like, bummy. Like, he's mm-hmm. trying to look terrible, but it still is, like – it's designer clothes. So you're like, all right, that looks pretty cool. Yeah, no, I know. Some, cool. some of his pregame outfits, and those are pretty nice, too. Yeah, I think he was wearing a turtleneck one time in the All Star game. Like that looked cut sick. Yeah, yeah. I've only seen one one person in the past, or two people now in the past like ten years wear a turtleneck, and it's it's him and my teammate Brett Thorne, and he does a decent job pulling it off too. But I thought turtlenecks were dead for good. You should try to pull one off uh, next year. That'll be fun, and then we can reference this uh, when it do, and I'll definitely promote it. <laughs> I might have to. That'd be pretty cool. Definitely. Now back to some hockey questions before we let you go is any advice you would give younger players on how to pursue their division one college hockey dreams? Yeah, I would say as early as possible, find, find your identity as a hockey player and, you know, don't switch too much from that. You know, you got to figure out, figure out exactly what you do well and fully understand what you are maybe not so good at at that point. And, and really, you know, it's good to train and get better at your weaknesses, but it's also great to exploit your strengths. So um, using those to your advantage while you work on getting better. And it's just, you know, you got to you gotta fully understand who you are as a player and a person um, to really get to where you want to be. Now, what's, your, what's been your favorite hockey memory so far with Tech? With Tech, I would say winning, uh, winning GLI last year is the last – probably the last GLI that's ever going to happen, which is, is a big bummer. That's something that played into my decision uh, coming to Tech. But, you know, being a part of that team and, and I didn't get to play in that game, but just being a part of the celebration after and, and, and just being with the guys. And I know how important that is to our program. So that was, that's probably my favorite memory. Now, do you have any shout outs you'd like to give to any of your teammates, family members or friends? I try to mention some of your teammates throughout the interview, but is there anyone I might have missed? Right now, I mean, shout out to all the boys. All the boys deserve it. Uh, and shout out mom and dad. Hello. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for coming on, Jake. I really appreciate it. Good luck uh, for the rest of this offseason and take care and stay safe. Yeah, I appreciate it, man. Thanks a lot for having me on.